I'm going to show you how to quickly build and run native Linux binaries of your Rust programs right on your Mac really quickly without having to spin up Parallels or VirtualBox. Just really quickly create native binaries for Linux and test them. It's really useful. First, what we'll do here is a cargo clean. And then we'll go ahead and do a cargo build. All right, and this is just the guessing game exercise from the Rust book. And so we'll open that up for you. You can see. Okay, so pretty basic. If you haven't done this, you should. The Rust book is great. All right. So if we go over here and we dig in to target debug, we're going to see our guessing game executable that we just got from our last build. And so if we take a look at this and see what the heck it is, it is a Mach O 64 bit executable for running on Mac. So if we run it here, we'll just run the guessing game and we'll do my favorite number first. One day that's going to be the right one. That's too small. Okay. So 55. Oh, too big. Okay. So how about 50? No, no, too big. All right, well, then we're getting warmer. 49. Hey, I got it. Okay, good. All right. So now we want to build this for Linux and test it to make sure that it works. Now, of course, you can set up all of the different bindings and things that you need to create a Linux binary on Mac. And you are going to need to do that when you're setting up your CI and getting builds out. But to test while you're developing and things like that, this is going to be a much easier way. And you'll be able to test the output from your CI workflows to make sure you're getting what you want this way as well. You possibly want to use a crate called Cross or some other ones. There's you know, a million different ways that you can set that up for creating binaries that are native to Linux and Windows from Mac or from any of the other ones to the other ones. But when you're on a Mac and you want to test on Linux, this makes it really easy. And on Windows, of course, they have the Linux subsystem. So that's very nice. So this is something similar that we can do very quickly and easily here on Mac. So first I'll show you what we do and then I'll show you what's happening. So here I am in Linux subsystem here and we will go ahead and we'll CD to Rusty and our guessing game. Okay, and then from here, we'll just go ahead and do cargo clean. Okay, and now if we do cargo build, go through and build it for us. All right, and if we go ahead and CD down to target bug and see what we have in here we have a guessing game and let's see what kind of file it is now it's an elf file and that's great and so we can see here oops i meant to do this i don't have my shortcut over here All right, so that's really good and we'll go ahead and play it over here as well let's see if i can get for once my first guess to be right Oh, too small. Okay, well then we'll go with 55, still too small. 66, not too small. 77, too small. 88, too big. Okay, 81. Oh, too small. 83. Oh, too big. So, must be 82. All right, cool. So, what is this? What is going on? How do I get a nice, easy Linux subsystem here? to build and test my binaries right here on Mac. Well, you might be familiar with it, or you might not be. What I'm really typing in with my shortcut there is multipass and shell, which really is starting this code smell instance. So if we go here and we take a look at, we'll just look this MPL is just shorthand for multipass list. 
You can see here that I have Ubuntu 2010 sitting here and it is in a running state. And if I go to multipass info, it wants to know which one I'm talking about. Okay. And you can see that code smell is set up here with two gigs of RAM and I've given it 12 gigs of disk and you can set them up however you want. And this is very convenient. So this is multipass. Now you can install multipass from the website or you can install it through homebrew if you're on Mac. And if you're on Linux, then you have all your different package managers. There isn't much to it. You can fire up as many instances that you want to. You can use different versions of Ubuntu. This is, I believe, Groovy. So that's the nickname they're using here. And you saw that it's 20.10. So that's kind of bleeding edge. You can use the long-term support version. You can pick. So if you go here to multi-pass launch, you see, yeah, this is the one I used here. My primary name is CodeSmell. Well, that's the name I have set for the primary image. You can set it to whatever you want. And you just pass in these arguments and flags and you're good to go. And you just tell it what you want. If you want to find, oops, what did I do? Oh, paper didn't roll. Multi, hey, cannot type, cannot type. Pass find. These are the different images that you can install. You can also, if you happen to have a local image that you want to use, you can use that too but it can pull these. So you can see that you have 2010, which is aliased as groovy, but you also have the different last few LTSs that you can go for and some other things. So it's really convenient and you may want to test across different things. Obviously you don't want to just test bleeding edge. You want to test long-term support and you ultimately probably aren't going to release a rust binary with nightly. You're going to release it with LTS. So, or sorry, with stable for Rust. And so, you know, you're going to want to test all these different things and uh, see what you can use, what you can't use. So very convenient. Check it out. All right. And if we go out here to the multipass documentation, multipass.run docs, you can go here and there isn't a whole lot to it. The other cool thing that you can do, and that is don't even open up your shell of your Ubuntu instance. You can just go ahead and use multipass exec and send a command right to your instance that's running. In fact, here I'll do it. If I go here and I go multipass exec and I say I want code smell, and I'll just pass it, you know, ls. You see, home snap. I can pass in, uh, how about pwd? Hey, home Ubuntu. But you see, I'm actually here in my, on my Mac, I am here in the target debug of guessing game for my Rust project. So you can set up a little, you know, MPE or something like that for your alias, and you can just send commands over there. So you don't have to open up the shell. You can just send over multipass exec, the name of your instance and whatever you want. So you could really have a really quick workflow of, Hey, okay, let's build this on Mac. We'll test it. Okay. Go over, do it on Linux. All right. So this is really great, really convenient. Install it, try it. It's very simple. You can install from Homebrew. You can install it getting the installer from the Multipass website. And you know, there's not a whole lot here, you know, and that's the great thing. It's really small, lightweight, and you can see that you can actually, if you're on Windows, you want to set this up, you're fine, but you have the Linux subsystem over there. This is open source. It's out on GitHub and it's really nice and really quick and very convenient because depending on what you're working on, you may have some pretty big differences between what your binary needs to do on Mac versus Linux. And so you might have to put in some conditional compiler directives, or you may need to use different things and test different things and different file systems on different Linux distros. And so you need, now, of course, Rust is abstracting a lot of that from you, but depending on how low you're getting, you want to check these things. And this gives you that opportunity to test those things, test your binaries. Now, as a quick reminder here, once you have your Ubuntu instance set up, don't forget to rust up. You want to rust up everywhere on all your 
machines of virtual and otherwise. And then you will also need to install build essential on your Ubuntu instance in order for you to get the linker working and for all to be well. So you probably know that, but just to make sure if you fire up a new instance of Ubuntu, you definitely need to rust up and get build essential installed. All right, check it out. Now, of course I'm saying rust and I am using this with rust, but this obviously works with anything that is going to be running natively. So you could be doing a, you could be working up with C or something like that. And same idea, uh, you could just go for it, but we're talking about rust here and I appreciate you watching. Please, like and subscribe and come back for more because there is about to be a flood of rust content coming your way thank you very much